You're listening to the weekly Parsha podcast, recorded with Hashem's never-ending assistance in Ramah Peshemesh Israel, 5775-2015. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Akev, and this week continues the, the conversation, the speech of Moshe Rabbeinu, of Moses, exhorting the Jewish people as he's about to pass on from the world, as they're about to enter into the land of Israel, giving them the instruction, talking about the beauty of keeping the Torah, of keeping the commandments, of having a true, a true relationship with God. And so at the beginning of the parsha, at the beginning of this week's parsha, Moshe Rabbeinu says to them, this is in chapter 7, verse 12, And it will be if you listen to these statutes, and you keep them and do them, God will keep His covenant and the kindness, which He swore to your forefathers. Verse 13, He will love you, and He will bless you, and He will make you great. And He will give blessings to the fruit of the womb, to the fruit of your land, your grains, your storehouses, your your grapevines, the produce of your cattle and your sheep, on the land that God swore to give to you, to your forefathers. And then the verse says in, in verse 14, you will be blessed amongst the nations, or more blessed than all of the other nations. You won't have any people and any animals who are unable to conceive and give birth. The verse says, amazing, when we read these verses, the promises of the Torah, the promises for keeping the Torah, for having this relationship with Hashem are amazing. If you do what it says in this Torah, you will not get sick. All of the the Egyptian sicknesses, the bad sicknesses, which you are aware of, you knew, you saw. Lo Yasiman Bach, you won't get them. God will give them to all of your enemies. And verse 16, And you will consume all the nations that God is giving to you. Don't have compassion upon them. Do not worship their idols. Because it will be your downfall if you do so. So the Torah gives us amazing promises, amazing blessings that can that can and will befall the Jewish people if they fulfill the Torah, if they fulfill the commandments, if they have that relationship with God, which God calls them to have with Him. God will express His love and give His blessings and bounty upon them. Now, there's a very interesting point here, which I saw, saw the theme of which is consistently brought down in the Medjush. The Medjur speaks about the verse, the, the first verse which starts off the Parsha, and it will be if you listen to and you keep these commandments, these laws, these statutes. Now, the word that it uses in this Pasuk, in this verse, is unusual. It says, The Parsha is called Ekev, because of this word Ekev. Now, the word Ekev means because of, as a result of, as a result of you listening to the commandments of the Torah, so God will give you all this bounty, all these blessings. Now, the word Ekev, the Meshesh points out, the Rashi points out, the word Ekev doesn't just mean because of, but the word Ekev also means a heel. A heel, the, the, the back of one's foot is called an akev. And now, why does the Torah use this word heel in this context of listening to the commandments of God, listening, and indeed there will be blessings? So the Medrash tells us that the word heel is used because there's something, just like the heel represents the end of a person's body, the bottom. The person's head is, of course, the beginning, the top of the body. And we speak about Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. That's the beginning. That's the head. The foot represents the end, the acharis, the bottom, the end, the, the latter part of the body. So the Medrash tells us that Hashem, the verses are promising us that it's true. We look in this world. And we see the blessings, are the blessings really being fulfilled? When we keep the Torah, when we do what's right, do we immediately see the results of that? Do we see those blessings immediately? I can't answer that question. Some people do, some people don't. But the Medjish says, I want you to know something. Whether or not you see it right now, you should know that in the end, 
you will receive those blessings. The blessings will come in the end. The way that the Medrash uh, says it, it gives a, an analogy to a Yasim, a person who lost his parents and he was taken into someone's home. And in that place, so the deal was that he's going to get food, he's going to have a, a roof over his head, he's going to have clothing, and he needs to be involved in the family, in, in the chores of the family, doing things for the family. And now at a certain point, indeed that's what happens, he does his chores, he does the things for the family, he works for the family, and he receives clothing and food and shelter. And at some point he says, is that all? Is this all I get? Is just the food and the shelter? And the person, the foster family who took him in, says the Medrash, says to him, of course not. These are just things that you, you, you do get because you're part of the family now, but the things that you've done to work for the family, the produce that you brought, the profit that has come as a result of you, you will be paid for. Make no mistake, you will be paid as well. Says the Medrash, this is an analogy, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Hashem is saying to us as well. When we keep the mitzvahs, when we do the right thing, we do see a result in this world. When, when a person does good things in this world, the natural result is good. We can see this all the time. We know who we want to do business dealings with. We want to deal with people who are honest, who have integrity. We know who we want to interact with. We know who we want our children to, to have as teachers. We want those people who are emotionally intelligent, who are going to interact with our kids in a way which is humble, which is godly, which is spiritual. In other words, we see very clearly that good begets good. That's clear in this world. But we don't always see the, the promises that HaKadosh Baruch Hu says. It's going to be amazing blessings. Not something that we always see immediately. It's not something that we even see over time. Says the Medrash, don't worry. Just like that child who lost his parents, who was brought into the foster home. He questions and worries, is he going to get paid for his work? And he's assured, of course he will get paid for your work. Don't make any mistake about it. We're going to give you your food and your, and your clothing and the shelter. But you're going to get paid ultimately. You will get paid. Don't think anything else. So in the same way, says the Medrash, the word Ekev, the word Ekev, which means the heel, as a result of listening to the commandments, the word, as a res- the word Ekev means as a result. In the end, the word is a heel because in the end you will see the results. You will indeed, at some point, when, Mesh- when the Messiah comes, or in the world to come, you will receive it. You have fruits in this world, but the principle is waiting for you in the world to come. Now there's a remarkable medrash that follows these midrashim, which contains a very powerful idea. Really, um, if we think about it, if we see the depth of it, there's something really amazing to learn from it. The medrash tells us, connects this verse to our psukim that are talking about God keeping His promise. So the medrash connects us to a verse just a few psukim before, in uh, the end of last week's parsha. It says in chapter 7, verse 9, And you will know that God is God. He is a trustworthy God. He keeps His covenant and kindness to those who He loves, those who, he, who keep His commandments for a thousand generations. So the Medrash tells us that there's an analogy. It's comparable to somebody, there was a king, and there was a certain subject of his who had left a pikadon, a certain item, in the charge of the king. Asked the king to watch this particular item. Now, this subject passes away, he dies, and the son of his subject so comes to the king and he says to the king, I would like to receive my pikadon. I want my, the, the item which my father gave to you to watch, I would like to take it back because I would like to give it to someone else to watch. And the king says to the subject, to the subject's son, do you not trust me? Do you not trust that I will keep, that I will be a proper watch person over this item that your father gave to me? Certainly you can trust me. The Medrash says that in the same way, is there anyone greater, is there anyone who's more trustworthy than God? If God promises that He's going to keep His covenant, He's going to bring these blessings upon those who keep the commandments Certainly, just like a king, Hashem is the ultimate king. And when He promises, when He makes a promise, He keeps that promise, and He's trustworthy. And the Medrash brings a couple of different places where we see that indeed Hashem keeps His promises. And even where we see that Hashem is the one who's the Baal Pikad, and He's the one who we have given over an item for Him to watch, so to speak. 
in speaking about the fact that Hashem is going to take the Jewish people out of Egypt, it refers to the Pasuk, Pakoi Pakarati Eschem. I have remembered you. The word Pakoi Pakarati is the same word in Hebrew as an item which is to be watched, which is a Pikadon. So it, it, it's this analogy, it represents the fact that Hashem is coming to return, so to speak, or to, to recognize that He has something that He's promised to watch. There's a promise that He's made that He's going to keep. And we also see from the fact that the verse speaks about that the Jewish people, Hashem had promised the forefathers that their children, they would leave Mitzrayim, they would leave Egypt with a tremendous amount of wealth. And indeed, that's what happened. So the Medjush is trying to show us that God is the Kel Anemon. He's the trustworthy God. He's the one who keeps His promises. Now, what's really interesting is that the Medjush brings four stories. Four stories, I'd like to share them all with you about Rabbi Pinchas ben Yar. He was a tremendous tzaddik, a great Talmud Chacham, a great sage, and he was extremely pious. And the rabbis say like this, listen, I'm going to read this inside, Rabbanan Amri, the sages say, Adam, from the trustworthiness of a human being, we can learn the trustworthiness of Hashem. Meaning, just like each and every one of us, as we said, you know, who do we want to trust? Who, who do we want to deal with? We want to deal with those who have integrity. Well, how do we, where did that come from inside of us that we trust those who have integrity? Or where does it come from that there's a desire to have integrity? It's not just a social consciousness, but it's something that's ingrained in us. A Kaddish Baruch who God programmed within us this desire to have integrity, this respect for integrity. So if Hashem has given this to us, so certainly Hashem Himself, God Himself, has this integrity. If, if He made us such that we value this integrity, certainly Hashem Himself has this integrity. And so the, the, the Medjush brings these amazing stories with Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair, who had incredible integrity. The first story of his integrity, says the Medjush, is that he lived in a certain southern city in the land of Israel, and two men came and asked him if he could watch for them two sacks of barley on their behalf. And indeed he said, I agree to do that. Not long after that, these two people left the town, and they completely forgot that they had given these two sacks of barley to Rav Pinchas ben Yoyer. Rather than allowing the barley to rot, Rav Pinchas ben Yoyer went and he took this barley, he planted the barley. And each year he continued to take the produce of the barley, those original two sacks of barley, and he would plant it again and place it into storage, storage bins, a storage house. Seven years later, the Medjush tells us, these two men reminded themselves that they had left these two sacks of barley with Rav Pinchas ben Yoyer thinking perhaps that it would have remained and not gotten ruined, they came back to Rav Pinchas ben Yar and they said, do you still have those two sacks of barley that we left with you, that we asked you to watch? Rav Pinchas ben Yar responded and said, those two sacks now fill up a great storehouse. Come and take your stuff. Come and take your barley. So the Medjur says, we see from the trustworthiness of Rav Pinchas ben Yar, he was asked to watch something. And not only did he watch it, but he, he made it grow. Certainly Hashem is the same, and as the Eitz Yosef says, one of the Meforshim here on the Medrash, Hashem also takes our tzedakah, the good deeds that we do, and He plants that tzedakah, He replants it, and it produces amazing fruits. We don't even realize the results of the kindness of the commandments. When we, when we fulfill those commandments, what it actually produces, but in the end Hashem saves that for us. Just as we see that a human being did that for these other people, so to Kal Vachoymer, certainly Hashem does it for us. Another story with Rav Pinchas ben Yar, the Medjur tells us, is that one time he came to a particular city, and in this city, only within the precise boundaries of this city, anyone who lived in the city, the mice were infesting. They were eating up all of the grains of that particular city. And Rav Pinchas ben Yar said to them, What are you doing wrong? You realize you're not properly taking off your miser. You're not tithing according to the law. You're not, taking a, you're not giving the tithes as you're supposed to. And he said to them, I, I guarantee that if you properly give your tithes on all of this grain, the mice will stop. And they said, if you guarantee it, then we'll do it. And indeed, that's what they did. They started to give the tithes properly, and the mice disappeared from the town. So that's the second story. And it's very interesting because in this story, we don't see him being trustworthy. But what we do see is that he is guaranteeing that Hashem is going to be trustworthy, that 
the, as the verses tell us that if we give our tithes, if we give our miser, if we, if we give the tzedakah as we're supposed to, if we give the charity as we're supposed to, God promises that we'll have bounty as a result of that. So Pinchas ben Yair was guaranteeing that what Hashem promises He will do, He will do. And indeed, that's what happened. A third story, the measure tells us that there was a certain individual who was involved in, in digging pits and digging wells, really, for the benefit of the rabbin, for the benefit of the public. And this man's daughter, she was suddenly swept away by a tidal wave, by water, by a river perhaps. And this story was told to Reb Pinchas ben Yoyer, and he said, it's impossible. Somebody who's benefiting others, benefiting the public with water, it can't be that his daughter would be swept away by water. Not long after that, so they came and they told her, Pinchas ben Yoyer, indeed, a miracle occurred, and she returned from the water. She was able to escape. And the sages said, what happened? They said that a malach, an angel, a heavenly angel came down and actually physically saved her. Interestingly, the Eitz Yosef here says that in the Yerushalmi, which brings the story as well, so it says that the malach, this angel, appeared in the guise of Rabbi Pinchas ben Yar. It looked like Rabbi Pinchas ben Yar himself. And this was to signify the fact that even though it could be that if Rabbi Pinchas ben Yar hadn't said this, she would not have been saved. But in the merit of the fact that the tzaddik, this righteous individual, said it, she was indeed saved. It was specifically because of his merit. Now this story also needs explanation. Where's the idea of namonos, of trustworthiness, or what do we see from this story? This story sounds like, you know, it's a miraculous story. It's a story where Repinthus ben Yair was someone who was such a great tzaddik, he was so righteous he could change nature. But how do we see, or what? what's the message of this story as well? That's the third story, last story that the Medrash tells us, actually involves... Not Reb Pinchas ben Yar, but rather another great sage of that time, Reb Shimon ben Shetach. One time he purchased a donkey from a certain Yishma'eli, an Ishmaelite, an Arab. And when his students looked at the, the donkey closely, they noticed that around the donkey's neck, there was a necklace and there was a, a, a precious gem that was attached to this donkey. Reb Shimon ben Shetach said, look, I purchased the donkey, but I did not purchase a precious gem. That wasn't part of the, the deal. So he said, I'm going to return it. Indeed, he brought it back. So this Yishmaeli, when, he, when Reb Shimon ben Shetach brought it back, he wasn't even aware that it had been on the neck of the donkey. And he said, blessed is the God of Shimon ben Shetach. He was so inspired by this act of Reb Shimon ben Shetach to return this item, which he didn't even know about, he wasn't even aware of, that he said, blessed is your God. Because clearly, as a result of this action, God was shining through into the world. Then, so the Medrash finishes off from, with these four stories and tells us that if we see the trustworthiness of human beings, of those who walk in the ways of God, those who try to manifest God's will in the world, are such, if they have such trustworthiness, from this we can see the trustworthiness of God, that God acts in this way. If He promises us, we're going to see the results of the commandments. If He promises us, that we're going to reap the rewards, the benefits of the commandments, and it's not just going to be in this world, it's going to be in the next world, we can certainly trust that and know it's going to happen, and that we will indeed receive it in the end. And that ends off the Medrash, is the Pshat, In the end, I will pay you off. You will receive the reward. You will see the results of your actions. And you can trust me, says God, that I have the integrity to give you the reward which you deserve. Now the thought that I had as I read these psukim, and as I read this medrash, was that this story with Rabbi Shimon ben Shetach and the three stories with Rabbi Pinchas ben Yoyer, they seem to be like almost otherworldly. Rabbi Pinchas ben Yoyer comes into a town, he says to them, something which is happening with your grains, it's because of something spiritual that you're doing wrong. And they listen to him, and all of a sudden everything changes. He says to, 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 to these people who come to him and say that there's this woman who's been dragged by the sea away, you know, he says it can't be. And as a result of that, it changes. These stories are supernatural. Even the very action that he did with those grains, with the barley, to plant them and to, to replant them, he was going to Fnimi Shur Sadin. It wasn't something which he was required to do by the Torah. Rabbi Shimon ben Shetach, he wasn't required to return that gem. It was something that Minadin, you know, based on the strict letter of the law, he could have kept. But he did things which were lifnimish, which were beyond. 
And it's very interesting because when we read the Psukim, it also, the, the promises that Hashem makes seem to be something which is beyond. Hashem says, if you keep the statutes, if you keep the laws, you're gonna, there's not gonna be any sickness. And there's gonna be blessings upon you and your people. There won't be any women who can't have children. It will be supernatural. You are, you will live a supernatural life. Right? So, we look at this and we say, that's just something that we don't experience. This is something that's beyond the pale of our experience. It's, it's not something that we see, that we, that we know of. And perhaps it's something which is only in the future. Like, like we said, like the Metrish says, in the end you'll see. In the end you'll see. Hashem is trustworthy. But I have a thought, I had a thought that came up as I'm learning this, that no, we think that it's only something that's going to be in the future. We think that it's something that, you know, we're not really shy to this. This is for big tzaddikim like Reb Pinchas ben Yorab and Reb Shemit ben Shetach. These were people who were just beyond. They were just unbelievable. And they, they were zeichet to miracles. The Torah is telling us something else. The Torah is telling us by saying that you can, you can access the fruits of this now. Yes, the Karen Kayemes Lelundam Haba. The principle is waiting for you in the world to come. But it's possible to, to access this now. The story with Reb Pinchas ben Yair tells us that anyone, it's not just a tzaddik, Reb Pinchas ben Yair does this on behalf of two people, two regular guys who came with these two sacks. They didn't think that they were going to get back storehouses full of stuff, but they did. They benefited from it. And the people in that city with the mice, they, they just did what they're supposed to do. And the problems just went away as, as if by magic. What was the reason why? Was it, would it have happened differently? Would it have done any, if Rapinchas Ben Yar wasn't on the scene, would the same thing have happened if they had realized on their own? I don't know. It could be that Rapinchas Ben Yar had to bring in that amuna, that trust, that faith, that belief. It seems that way certainly from the story with the guy who was digging the wells on behalf of the public. Rapinchas Ben Yar brought in a belief that it can't be that a person is doing something on behalf of the public and his daughter would be pulled away with that very, that, that she would lose her life, heaven forbid, as a result of the very thing that he was doing on behalf of everyone. It can't be. But his belief, his emuna, meant that it had to be true. It had to be true and she was miraculously saved. And it's also true in regards to this, this city with the mice. He said, if you give mice, sir, I promise, I guarantee these mice will go away. And that's what happened. But the koyach, the power of Rav Pinchas ben Yoyer, may not have been per se in his tzidkus, in his righteousness, but perhaps, and I believe that this is the me- message of the Medrash, that it's something that we all can do. And this is something that the Madrega Adam speaks about, and the Shara Bitochen, the, the altar of Navarik speaks about this. It's possible for everyone to access a place of emuna, of bitochen, of trust in God, that I know if God promises... And that's what the Medrash is saying, that's what the Pasuk is saying. When God promises, He fulfills His promise. The only thing that might be missing is my ability to receive it or to believe in it. I think that we can even say, that this is hinted to in the Pasuk itself. It says, And it will be when you listen to the, these laws, and you keep them and you do them. Rashi tells us that what's Ekev Tishmun, another Pshat in Ekev Tishmun, if you even keep the smallest mitzvahs, if you're machshiv, if you consider, if you give value to even the smallest commandment, even those things that people just don't, don't pay attention to those little details. If you give attention to those little details, if you give chashivus importance to that, so then Hashem promises that He will keep this kindness, this, this, this covenant that He's made with your forefathers. And I think that part of what it's saying is, if you buy in, if you really buy into the the spiritual program which is here in front of you, which the Torah lays out for us, the commandments, the, the, the chesed, the kindness, all these things, if you really buy in the way Reb Pinchas Ben Yair buys in, then you can bring down the future time. You don't have to wait for Mashiach to come, for the Messiah to come, to experience these blessings. You don't have to wait for Olam Habat, for the world to come. It's here in this world. You can access the Torah. You can access godliness, spirituality, supernatural. You can access that here, right here, right now. All you need to do is buy in all the way down to the smallest, the, the, the littlest, the, the minute details of the Torah. If you buy in all the way and you buy in, you will believe. 
like Rapinchas ben Yair, that if I do what's right, I keep those commandments, I give my meiser, I give my tithes, I, I, if I'm doing something on behalf of the public, I'm, I'm doing kindness. If I return that item, even though it's not something I have to, if I'm lifnim yishuas hadin, if I behave the way God wants me to behave, the way I understand that God wants me to behave, then Hashem will perform miracles for me. And I will see things that are supernatural. And the supernatural will be natural for me because I am behaving in a supernatural way. I want to bless you. And I ask you to bless me. That Hashem should help us to indeed be able to access this amazing spiritual, supernatural way of being. Hashem should help us to buy in, to go all the way, to be able to do His mitzvahs, to, to fulfill His commandments, to learn His Torah, to do it right, to be the person who God really wants us to be. And if we do that, Hashem should help us to be able to live and experience a supernatural way of being where all we experience is God's blessings constantly being showered upon our lives. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.